Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the Bruce M. Firestone Legacy Lecture. This is a lecture that I prepared for Professor Barbara Orser in the Telfer School of Management that I gave in February 2016 and it's in six parts. I'm uh, the founder of the Ottawa Senators, a National Hockey League team. I'm a real estate broker with Century 21 Explorer Realty Inc. and I have my engineering degree in civil from McGill University in Montreal and my Master's of Engineering Science uh, from the University of New South Wales in Sydney and my PhD from the Australian National University in Canberra. Uh, they wanted me to talk about everything I've learned on my journey in life uh, and uh, to do that in an hour or so. Uh, but uh, really what I wanted to title this uh, is Brucey's Big Adventure because you know for me at least uh, life has been an adventure and I wanted to in, at least in this le legacy lecture convey some of that. So I start this way how do you turn a rich dad into a poor dad? So not a poor dad into a rich dad the other way around and the punchline is obviously by a National Hockey League team. So the idea is that you've bought a National Hockey League team it's the second happiest business day of your life. Why is that? Because the happiest business day of your life is the day you sell it. So how did I get involved in the National Hockey League and, uh, and, and this whole adventure to bring back the Ottawa Senators? It was back in 1987 I was driving in my Saab up and down the major highway in Ottawa which is called the Queensway and I was asking myself a question what does Toronto have that Ottawa doesn't have. So if you live in a smaller town, look around you, see what kind of other things are happening in cities maybe geographically near yours. Uh, they're a little bigger than you, uh, than your city. Find out what they have that you don't have and ask yourself, can, can you do that here? And so what does Toronto have that Ottawa doesn't have back in that day was a National Hockey League team called the Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, so I, I got uh, two of my colleagues together in a room. We were playing at the Lions Arena. We were playing pickup hockey and afterwards I said, Randy, Randy Sexton, Cyril Leader, Cyril, hang back uh, for a couple of minutes. So they did. And I said, you know, I think uh, Ottawa's getting to the point now where it probably could support a National Hockey League team. I said, oh, okay, that's interesting. And, uh, you know, maybe we should be the bidder and we should go after a National Hockey League franchise. So immediately Randy Sexton, who's an MBA from Clarkson, got up and said, wow, yeah, let's do it. And Cyril Leader, who's more uh, cautious, he's uh, the president of the Auto Senators today, uh, and a chartered accountant, said, well, wait a second, how much is it going to cost, and what do you think, how are we going to pay for it? So we guessed uh, that the uh, new NHL team would cost around $35 million, which is what an NBA franchise at that time would uh, cost, but the actual uh, price that the NHL put on it was $50 million. And in answering Cyril's question, how to pay for it, I said, let's bring back the Senators by bootstrapping it. So what we did was we bought 600 acres of land. It's a land assembly that you can see here on the screen in front of you, uh, where the Palladium, uh, which then became the Corral Center and then was renamed Scotiabank Place and is today called Canadian Tire Center, is in the lower right-hand quadrant. That's the south east quarter, at least as it faces you on your screen. Uh, so the Palladium was going to go right in the middle of this uh, land assembly and uh, National Hockey League team and then build uh, quite an intense uh, uh, small town around it to drive up the land value. So it was a pretty simple. Uh, this is what the building looks like today. It's called the Canadian Tire Center. And uh, there, there are some innovations here. It was designed by Gino Rossetti, who is an architect out of Detroit. He did the Palace of Auburn Hills, where the Detroit Pistons play. And this building actually has a few innovations. First of all, it's uh, about half uh, sunk into the ground. So it's a little bit more human scale. So if you look at the people on your screen, you can see that um, they relate better to the, uh, to the size of the building than if it was you know, at grade and went up from there. By putting the building about halfway into the ground and halfway out, also you distribute pedestrians. So pedestrian traffic inside the building half goes up and half goes down, so that reduces uh, your travel time for them. And it also did something really interesting, I think, in the terms of the design, and that is that this building has concourses that are double loaded. What that means is that they have doors to the outside world, which I call windows on the world, and doors to the inside to the concourse, so they're double loaded. 
And that means even on days when the arena is dark, those stores, restaurants, the YMCA there, the uh, physiotherapy clinic there, and the other uh, users can be open and it can be active and alive. So the idea was buy 600 acres for around 12,000 an acre, 7.2 million, which we did. Rezone those lands, keep 100 acres for the Palladium, now Canadian Tire Center, drive up the value for the rest of the property by maybe $100,000 an acre in profit, which just happens to be, when you multiply those two numbers, $50 million. So in a way, the, the land allowed us to self-capitalize the team, put that money in those uh, armored uh, vehicles that you see in front of you here, uh, Brinks trucks in this case, drive them down to New York City, Park Avenue, give them to the National Hockey League, and in return we get an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper that says that Ottawa has an NHL franchise. Pretty simple plan. Now the night before, uh, the NHL Board of Governors met to decide which teams that they would uh, actually admit. This is back in December of 1990. We were in Palm Beach, Florida. Uh, lobbying with a lot of other cities uh, for uh, NHL franchises. One of the members of the Board of Governors at a 600 person dinner comes up to me and says, well, Mr. Farso, I want to talk to you. Okay, yes sir, uh, what is it? You will never, ever, ever get an NHL franchise for Ottawa. Whoa. So this is after we've spent seven, eight million dollars on a piece of land, two or three million dollars on the bid, visited pretty much every NHL city over and over again to, you know, to lobby. And, uh, and signed up 15,000 uh, priority registration numbers for season tickets, uh, signed up uh, 500 corporate sponsors, 31 original corporate sponsors, raised a whole bunch of money, and now somebody's telling me you will never get a franchise. So I said to him, look, sir, I, I hope you'll reconsider that. I think the NHL should give franchises to cities that love NHL hockey, that will cherish the franchise, that will take care of it, and if you would reconsider, I think Ottawa would make a good partner. And he looks at me very sternly and says, no, you heard what I had to say. So a few minutes later, this is a picture of me uh, sitting down with uh, my, my colleagues at, at the table in this, uh, as I said, 600 person uh, dinner party, and uh, yeah, pretty upset. And, uh, you know, some people came over to me and said, so what's wrong? I said, oh, nothing, everything's good, you know, life, life's okay, yeah, yeah. And finally, Norm Green, who was the owner at that time of the Minnesota North Stars, uh, which became the Dallas Stars, uh, came over and said, what's wrong, Bruce? And I told him, and, you know, he's a friend, so I told him, and he said, well, look, that maybe that's one vote you won't get. There's 20 others out there that you have to get. Get that schmucky look off your face, kid, and get out there and hustle. And I said to myself, you know what, Norm is right. You know, maybe that's a vote we won't get. Let's uh, let's go get the rest of them. So the next day, the NHL uh, meets, uh, the Board of Governors meets, you know, to decide. And uh, and sure enough, at one o'clock, we get uh, taken to the uh, room where the Board of Governors were meeting. And uh, I look at a piece of paper, and on that piece of paper in that uh, room, uh, where John Ziegler, the president of the National Hockey League, you could see him on the right hand side of your screen. Um, on a piece of paper it says the NHL is pleased and proud to announce today that uh, conditional memberships have been granted to the cities of Ottawa and Tampa. I went, oh my god, we just won this thing. And I turned uh, uh, to, to uh, John Ziegler, uh, who as I said was the president of the NHL, about uh, to be replaced by Commissioner Gary Bettman, but uh, at the time he was the man running the show. And I said, uh, John, what was the vote for Ottawa? And he said, it was unanimous. I said, no dissenters. He said, no. I said, wow, that's great. And uh, to myself, I was thinking, wow, we turned around that one governor who said, you will never, ever, ever get a franchise. And on the other side of John, you can't see him in this picture because I cut him out, is Phil Esposito from Tampa. So the Ottawa Senators and the Tampa Bay Lightning came in to the NHL at the same time. About three weeks later, back in Ottawa, we had collected... <coughs> Excuse me. We had collected twenty-two and a half million dollars in cash for our season tickets. We'd uh, signed, I think, a hundred sweet leases for our new building, which had not yet been built, and done a lot of other work. And I get a call from that NHL Board of Governors member saying, "Hey, Bruce, do you remember uh, what I said the night before you got a, a team?" I said, "Yeah, uh, I do. I think I'll remember it all my life." He said, "Well, I just want to tell you what we did. Myself and two other members of the." board got together and we decided to go up to every better Hamilton, Milwaukee, Seattle, uh, Houston, Portland, 
uh, Tampa, St. Petersburg, Ottawa, uh, maybe I'm forgetting a few, and say to them, you will never, ever, ever get a franchise in and then put the name of the city in. It was a character test. And it turns out the NHL, and that would be true of the National Football League, NBA, you know, the Bundesliga, any of these leagues, uh, English Premier League, they don't give franchises to cities, they give them to people they like and trust. It was a character test, and he said, we wanted to see who would keep going, who would quit, and it turned out that some got angry, some did quit, and only two guys kept on lobbying and, and pushing, and that was you and Phil, and we gave the franchises to Ottawa and Tampa. So, uh, part of my legacy is, uh, at least what I've learned, is that trust is the number one thing in life. And you will find that a lot of uh, young people, I teach uh, a lot of young people, you know, they're all 22, 23 years of age, 21, and they think, of course, that love is the number one thing in life. It's natural, they're young people, but I asked them, you know, if you had a girlfriend that was somebody you couldn't trust, or a boyfriend, a husband, a wife, a partner, you know, that pro relationship probably wouldn't be very good, and they, by that time they've all had, or most of them have had, just exactly that. So I said, whether it's business or it's your personal life, I found that trust is the number one thing in life. If you are surrounded by people that you like and trust and that have your back, that your life is going to be much better than the alternative. And I asked them, ever buy anything from someone you don't like and don't trust? And the answer is maybe once, but never again.